Hi, and welcome. I'm Dr. Andrew Duggleby. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Phoenix Aerospace. And I'm going to do a lecture series, and honestly, it's probably for myself, but likely also for people here at Venus, and we'll decide what to do with it after that. But I'm going to step through one of my favorite books, which is, pull them up. Here we go. Kuchiman's Design of Aerodynamic, Aerodynamic Design of Aircraft. And what's great about this book is when you think through all you have to do to go make a vehicle. So I'm going to write it down here. I'm going to come up. And so that if you think through say an aero database, or even a propulsion model, right? This is what's used to fully analyze your aircraft performance. And I mean like full aero database. So this would be both, you know, experimental kind of wind tunnel measurements, um, CFD, these, these days CFD is getting really good. And so you're actually driving most of your aero database off of CFD while anchoring it to experiment. And then repulsion model, clearly you're going to have some test points. So I'm going to say this is experiment. But those test points are usually done at sea level pressure, not always at altitude. And so you do have some sort of altitude adjustment here that you're modeling to account for, you know, going higher in the al altitude. And so that might be the basis of what you're actually like really doing uh, your, your no kidding design. Maybe I'll call that critical design. Although that means different things to many people, but uh, well, the other words will be C's, so it's nice. So above that, though, you, you, we, we might think about trying to so kind of conceptualize an aircraft, right? Um, sizes and shapes and, and engine balances and all this different stuff. And so, you know, here we're going to do some CFD, and it'll, it'll be a higher order CFD. Um, sorry, a higher order from maybe it's the same order as this, it's just less of it. So it could still be RANS, uh, not necessarily implying it's a deep, large eddy simulation or anything like that, but you'd primarily be using CFD. You'll also be anchoring to some you know, analogs. W what other aircraft in this uh, genre have seen to, to make sure you're not getting too far out of bounds. And then, you know, on your propulsion side of things, you would have some sort of thermodynamic model that, that's still accounting for the actual processes in your engine, what compression cycles, what expansion cycles, nozzle sizing, right? This is all to kind of get that vehicle concept, like, where it's actual shapes and actual sizes. But then above this, there's sort of a, a configuration level where you're letting everything kind of float. And so on the engine side, this is, you call this a rubber engine, right? Where it's, it's, it's a thing that's generating this magical thrust. You might have only, say, ISP or thrust to weight curves on it. And then from an airline's point of view, here, I'm going to just say here, reduced order model. This could be a panel method. It could be in, in viscid flow, like potential flow theory. Uh, but you're, you're still going to kind of turn the crank on these things. Um, and, and likely this is still, you know, you're still doing this on a computer. You're still generating curves. Right? And you're trying to look at uh, different state points, different mission profiles, right? Different sizing tools is what those would be at. But there's, there's a level above this, okay? And I'm just going to call it analysis. And that's actually why I love this book. So at this level above it, right, this is all stuff that we can actually stuff into our brain and start understanding really high level concepts. And so in the end, you know, this might have some hypotheses, right? Or, um, you know, different trades on really big configuration of aircraft, swept wing versus skinny versus wave rider. You know, you'll have abstractions. You know, I don't even want to call it a rubber engine. You're, you're going to just have some ideas here that, um, can start feeding you in simple, right? It's, it's all this stuff. And the reason this is powerful is before, because before you get fully into say the configuration of rubber engine and all this stuff, there's, there's actually some broader choices to be made. And so this book was actually, DJ Kuchuman was, uh, you know, large, uh, really important figure in aer aerospace engineering, kind of 50s, 60s, 70s. And, and 
this was actually his kind of original book, and AIAA found a reprint and decided to kind of kick it back forward and get it back into print just because of, honestly, it's this top part of this analysis. And, and that's what you'll find. In fact, if you, you know, there are some really good textbooks out there that really teach concepts well, but I've found the older textbooks that were written, and I, I, mean, I don't even know if I'll call this a textbook, but what you're getting is things that are powerful in analysis because computers weren't around to just kind of turn the crank. And so there, there's an aspect of which, because we have computers, we're able to kind of turn the crank here. But that's, that's why I want to walk through this is because there's actually some really powerful tools at the analysis level to help us understand. And the reason this is important to Venus is, you know, we have a new engine that's finally unlocking you know, the hypersonic economy. We're, we're, it's a, you know, the detonation engine is a whole new concept, how we're using it in combustion with a ramjet and different things. Like it, it's truly changing everything. And so this is the only book that actually talks at that level that when then say, hey, if this system exists, then aircraft like this would do it. Otherwise, you're, you're, you're down here configuring an aircraft based on subsonic conditions, or maybe it's you know, these barely supersonic kind of afterburning systems, or, or you're you know, trying to think of it as a rocket. And so, you know, think of it as a rocket, thinking about as an airplane. Um, neither is true. This is actually a whole new class. This is a high-speed aircraft, right? And so the picture on the book is great because this is kind of the Concorde that, that would represent the limit of, of really, you know, if you had a, a good turbofan engine, and the Concorde actually had the engine uh, with an afterburner that helped it get up to speed. But then when it was at Mach 2, it turned off the afterburner and it was what we would call super cruise. It wasn't using an afterburner. So th this would represent kind of one of those great configurations. And we'll see that drop out of this as we, as we get into the course. So with that, uh, that's, that's the main reason behind it. And so just in this first little bit, I'm just going to get into a couple of the basics. And this is all stuff you've either seen before or maybe you've even seen me drive before, depending on if you watch any other any other videos. But in the end, you know, we're taking a look at, we want to go some distance S, and the time rate of change of that is the velocity. Great. But the velocity is a function of, gosh, all sorts of things, right? It's a function of, of height. It's going to be a function of uh, time, of you know, all, all sorts of variables the velocity is going to be a function of. And, and the performance we get at that is going to change quite a bit. And so you know, F equals MA, Right, really, th this is th this is almost a silly relation, but just to understand that, in the end, then when we do F equals ma, which I'll write mass is just weight over gravity to kind of stick with the Kuchman form. This is not the my my favorite form of doing this, but I'll kind of stick to his notation and acceleration. Then it's change right, time rate change of velocity with respect to time. Uh, I'll go ahead and actually do the, the sort of the derivative calculus step in here, where this is actually the same as weight over two g and the time rate of change of v squared, right? If you took the derivative of v squared, the two would come down, cancel this two, and then you would get, um, you get that to work out, okay? Um, and this is actually respect to s, right? Because ds dt is, is v. So uh, this is equal to then thrust minus drag and then minus any height changes you may do along, uh, along that streamline, okay? along that distance s. So th this is kind of a, a combined form, kind of time, time and distance. Um, but ultimately, you know, we're really concerned about distance. And then if we want to just take a look at cruise, the cruise condition. All right, so just taking a look at cruise, a couple things are easy. So this would be dh, d time is equal to zero. So I'm not changing altitude. Um, you end up having this top equation just becomes my thrust is equal to drag. That's not very exciting, but it, it's the condition for cruise. And then you have lift has to be equal to the current weight of the system, which would be the weight of the aircraft minus how much fuel has been burnt, right? The aircraft is getting lighter. So this is the only form that's actual changing, okay? And so then um, taking a look then at the energy version of this, okay? And so if I take the drag times velocity, that's, that's the energy, right? And so this would be then weight, that's weight of fuel, right? Over lift to drag, right? And really what I just did is I divided by lift to drag and got lift and then lift is equal to weight, all right? And then D range, D time, all right? 
And so this is the energy. And where is that energy coming from? Well, it's coming from the burning of the fuels. Okay, so this is actually the that heating value. I, I'll get into the heating value. I actually like his units in a second, but come back to it in a second. Times the efficiency, that's an eta. The efficiency of how I'm converting that chemical energy into propulsive energy. And we'll come back on that one in a second as well. And then this is the weight d time. Okay, change of the fuel. And so one of the reasons I like this form is you know, enthalpy, um, sorry, heating value. So I'll, I'll just kind of clarify here that H is really what we would consider in thermodynamics the heating value over gravity. Okay, so this, this would normally have units of, say, uh, megajoule per kilogram. And then this would have units of meters per second squared. But if you actually do the, the conversions here, this this is actually the same units as um, velocity squared meters per second. And so then in the end, this is this is units of meters, which is which is fun because then you, then you get two things. I'm going to do it a different color. So for hydrocarbons, okay, the H is roughly um, four thousand kilometers. Right? And then for hydrogen, H is roughly 12,000 kilometers. Right? So like Kuchumon in his book, he does carry around both hydrocarbon and hydrogen. Um, I, I will try to kind of poke at it. Right? A long time, you know, the, the book was written in 1978. There's been quite a bit of advances. And so as, as part of this kind of lecture series, I'll highlight the things that we either have gotten a little bit better at or know about more. But really, the, you, you'll be, you're going to be surprised how much of this is actually still accurate. But one of the things he sort of points out is, hey, there's this huge potential for hydrogen. And I'll just kind of capture, like, hey, where are we at with this? Um, TLDR, hydrogen has great energy potential. Potential The density is really low. And in fact, uh, right now, the merit of, the factor of merit is for every kilogram of hydrogen, you basically have to carry you know, 10 kilograms worth of equipment to keep it cold and keep it pressurized. It, it's, not, it's not great. So, you know, we're not there yet with hydrogen. All right. Um, so from this energy, the, the last thing we're going to then do is get to the range equation. So honestly, you have R here, and you can integrate with time. And so you have to, if you haven't seen this before, right, you end up getting a natural log because you have the time rate change of your weight. So you bring it over to the side. And so, you know, you end up getting that the range is equal to H and then eta propulsive lift drag. And then you have a natural log of one minus, I'll do it in this form, one minus the weight of fuel weight. Now, a lot of times I, I will just, if you might have seen me before, I just define that as lambda, that's kind of a standard notation. Uh, but this is the range, okay? And if, if you're not carrying a lot of fuel, you could actually see how this uh, this term kind of change. It can simplify from a natural log, but for most aircraft we're gonna think about doing, that we're carrying a lot of fuel. like roughly 50, maybe even 60% fuel. So, you know, the, it is going to get lighter on us. Uh, and so this will matter for us. Okay. Um, and then the nice thing that even right out of the book, so this is kind of chapter one of Kuchumon, but right out of the book, he then also starts parameterizing this stuff again, because it's back it's to this analysis. Right. So, so many times we, we may start with this and then start, you know, jamming it into, say, configuration and start looking at, um, uh, thrust to weight and wing loading, things like that, we'll, we'll get there. But but where he then immediately starts saying is, now let's talk about this, and I'll go in a different color, is, says let's talk about this and say the weight of the aircraft, okay, it's going to have a couple different forms. And so C1 times weight, it's going to have some function of it that's a function of the weight of the aircraft itself. So that would be things like wings, Right? The, the bigger the weight of the aircraft, the more weight of wings, a fuselage, uh, a fuselage wings, um, undercarriage, okay, a few other things. And then he said there is some fraction amount of weight times the payload. And this is, the payload could be humans. And so this would be the payload itself. But it also would be the things to keep, you know, silly humans alive, or so it could be then fuselage and any, you know, any sort of 
air breathing equipment or, or you know, keeping the humans, as we start looking at high speed flight, how do you keep that payload cool? You know, humans don't like to get hot. And then you have the weight of the engine. And then you have the weight of the fuel. Okay. And so this is a nice form that we can then immediately, and then I'll, I'll kind of uh, end here by writing the final form below. And so, you know, we are going to be interested in maximizing payload. Why? Because usually that's, that's, we're building this for a business, right? You're going to get paid by payload. So we're in the end, this is the form that we'll want to take a look at. How do we maximize the payload per weight of the vehicle? So if you do the math, that's just one over C2, one minus C1, and then minus how much fuel you got in. And remember, I, I call that lambda. And then um, the engine. And so, you know, we'll come back to that because in the end that becomes kind of thrust weight of the, of the aircraft. So normally the weight of the engine is roughly 10%, usually on a jet engine side. We'll, we'll see what estimates come, come around with. Okay, so that's a good start. On the next one, we'll come back in um, and we'll do, uh, we'll do a little bit more, or we'll talk about these factors C1, C2. Um, and I'll just kind of leave you here with this, this final thought. This term here, in the end, yeah, and we'll kind of prove it over the next few little bit, but in the end, that term is basically constant. So that what we end up seeing is that the propulsive efficiency, and we have to go to find that, right? That's thermodynamic and kind of the, the kinetic propulsion efficiency versus Mach number increases. And the lift of drag versus Mach number decreases. And this is, this is kind of true. I'm going to add a couple curves here in general. This is true for, um, in kind of in general, but really we see this for, that may be turbofans, that may be ramjets, and that might be scramjets. And then, um, so this is turbofan, this is a ram, that's scram. And then lift to drag, this might be, um, I'll draw it up here, this is swept, wing, slender, and then wave rider. And so we'll kind of dig into all of those, but at first level, that's what's kind of interesting about this, is in the end, this is basically constant. And so we, that's gonna be a big part of how we then go and kind of configure, configure our aircraft. Uh, now, some of these things don't exist yet. So, uh, you know, we may have challenges. We may say, hey, wouldn't it be great to go fly this condition, but maybe the science isn't there yet, or wouldn't it be good, great to fly this condition, but however you back out the thermal or you back out the cost, maybe it's not worth it. So we'll, we'll kind of dig through it, but it, it's really neat. And that's why I love this book is, is at this level, kind of this analysis, we're going to get a lot of power out of kind of doing simplifying assumptions like this, and then, and then seeing kind of all classes of vehicle, all classes of engine. Okay. We'll see you next time.